So this project of mine starts with salvaging some pallet wood. If you've never used pallets before in your projects, don't be disappointed when you realize you don't get a whole lot of wood off of a pallet. For starters, I'm just doing a lot of rough cutting here, getting rid of the ends of the boards that have got splits or nails. I had a couple of boards that were actually in pretty good shape, except they had a nice clean split down the middle. So I just added some glue, threw some clamps on, I'll set these aside and finish trimming them up after the glue dries. After I ripped all the boards to width, I'm going to cut them off here at the miter saw. And to make sure that all my cuts are consistent, I'm going to set up a stop block here. Now with a stop block set up like this, there is the possibility that that board can get stuck between the blade and the stop block and create a problem. So you'll see that after I make that cut, I let that blade come to a complete stop before I raise the arm. This is one way to minimize having any boards get caught and fly off of that saw. Well, you already know that I'm building a wooden bank. So I'm going to draw out a quick sketch here. And the dimensions that I put in here are just the dimensions of my wooden bank. There's no right or wrong. You can build these any size that you want. I primarily based my sizes off of the wood that I had available from the pallets that I was salvaging. At this stage, I haven't cut the top and bottom piece, and you can see that I use an approximate symbol here. I'm going to glue the sides together, and then I'll measure that and cut the top and bottom to fit. The reason being is the dimensions might just be a little bit different than what I've got written down here. What I'm really looking for is that quarter inch reveal. I decided to batch these projects since I was going to the trouble of setting up saws and stop blocks. So I've got about four of these little banks in some stage of the process here. You'll see me now, I'm just getting ready to glue the sides up. I'll get these clamped up, squared up, and moved aside and then we'll be able to move on to building the tops and the bottoms for these boxes. And I'll just check them for square and then set them aside. And when I say square, it's pallet wood, so I use that term pretty loosely. After the glue dries and we've cleaned up the sides with some sanding, we're going to go ahead and measure the dimensions and cut the tops and bottoms. Now the top and bottom are going to be a half an inch larger than the dimensions of the sides. So I'll skip the 
cutting and ripping of the wood and ultimately this is the size we're looking for and you can see that quarter inch reveal I put a quarter inch round over uh, profile on the tops and bottoms and this first pass I just kind of make a skim pass get the bulk of the material off and then I follow it with pass where I'm actually riding up against the wood with that bearing it's not really a bearing but it serves the same purpose Now it's off to the drill press where I'll add this coin slot in the tops. This is a quarter inch drill bit and that coin slot is about an inch and a half, maybe an inch and three quarters total length. And I'm just using the drill bit to mill out the wood. You could drill the holes on the ends and get in there with a scroll saw or a jigsaw or a coping saw and clean out the inside of that. I just cleaned up my coin slot with a couple of different files and some light sanding around the edges. On a couple of these banks, I added some dowels in the top. And I did this really just for looks. These are exposed dowels and I kind of like that look. I didn't do that on all of them. But here what I'm doing is just finding the center of, of the tops along the edges and making sure that it'll line up with the sides when I put the dowel in. I drill these in, add a little bit of glue, tap them in the rest of the way. And then I'll take them to the sander and uh, clean them off. The bottom is just going to be held in place with screws. That way you can remove one screw, loosen the other, flip the bottom out of the way, and get to your loop. To make these banks a little personalized, I got my stencils, spray paint, and I added a letter to each one of these. Now if you didn't have stencils, you could hand paint the letters on, you could get some vinyl and have a vinyl cutting made of the letter, or you could even leave these blank. It's really up to you at this point. So here they are in all their glory. I'm pretty happy with the way these came out and this is a super easy gift idea. You can throw these together and you can make them as fancy or as simple as you want. Thanks for watching.